Okay. So, as it was said, I'm from Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. Uh, German told you already about it this morning. Thank you. It's better. Can you hear me? Okay. And I'm uh, working in a small group dealing with uh, glycomic data. So, first, I just I don't want to do a biology course. I'm not a biologist myself, but this is a good picture uh, provided by Josiah from Boston University, uh, showing the problematic of glycobiology. I mean, where is it? The pointer. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So those small dots are monosaccharides. So those are sugars. And on this picture, you have two cells, and we know that sugars is holded by protein sometimes, holded by lipids, but it's everywhere on the cell surface, and it's also involved in the recognition by <coughs> other cells. So this one has lectins, it's dedicated protein, which are recognizing the sugars there. So that the picture of glycobiology. And we are not doing biology, as I said, at SIB. And what we are doing is providing application to biologists. So Expase is a portal of um, Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. And since uh, last year, uh, there is something dedicated to glycobiology here. So when you go to Expase, you have all the categories there. And that's what we have. So we have databases. It's only created databases, so no big data sets. And we are building uh, tools and applications on top of it. So if I come back to the previous uh, drawing, I will map all what we have here on the drawing. So first, uh, we have a glycoprotein-oriented application where you can try to get the glycoprotein by mass, or you can see the you can align glycosylation site, or depending of the or the type of glycosylation or or uh, carbohydrate structures. It's all based on this Unicarb KB database. We also have, okay, we have glycan binding oriented. Um, we have this database, which is a host pathogen interaction database using the sugars. And we build a, a epitaph network to see how um, sugars are related in terms of uh, structures, and we use it to extract from a given sugar the, um, the known epitopes. Then we have experimental oriented uh, tools. We have Java libraries, we have um, the main thing is the database here. It's a mass spec database for sugars. We can do, we can simulate the digestion also of sugars and profile for uh, do, do, uh, glycan profiling for uh, experimentalists. And then that's what we are building. But, oh, there are also some tools we are spreading around in our uh, tools. But we are at SIB, and we benefit from this internal resource, Uniprot. Uh, you know about it. IMAP and Varizone. Uh, Jervin told about this morning. And we are li linking to all those. Uh, maybe you know Glytucan. It's a, gl it's a glycan repository um, built here in Japan. There is the glyco epitope here. We, you have uh, CFG database, PDB, PubMed, of course. Okay, so a lot of those projects were just small standalone projects. So what we did is starting from the database, we had some static data files. 
but Zoltar based on the tree I, I mentioned before, and it's not related to REF. We're still with relational database, Postgres. And on top of this, we are building services and REST API just to connect to the tools using Java, Python, some RDF for the, um, the example uh, Jaren showed this morning, and the tool themselves using D3 for visualization, Polymer for having web components in uh, a, I would say, container, and that's it. The new thing we are working on is this part in the middle because I started to say we had tools and we had database. And as a small projects, they were disconnected from, from the database itself. So now, to increase communication between the tools themselves, we are building this. Okay, so to illustrate what I said that all those small projects need to communicate. I have three examples right there. Of course, Uniprot is always in the picture. So it's a glycan-mediated protein-protein interaction. So from the glycoprotein database here, we can have access to the protein part. We have access to the sugar part. It's hosted here. And with the tools, we can search the substructure and go to this host pathogen interaction database. So from there we know which sugar is involved, uh, is recognized by which protein and we always go back to the uniprot. So what this one? From MS to glycoprotein, okay, so we have this tool to define, I mean, to suggest uh, glycopeptides registered in the UniCard KB uh, database for the sugars and mapped with Uniprot. And we show here the relationship between the sugar and the protein. And depending on the mass, you can have results. And then you go either to the, to the peptide itself and go back to Uniprot, or you can go to the sugar by composition here and and go to this uh, profile, glyco profile application. <coughs> oh, oh okay. And this one is a bit more uh, complex because I mean you can take different paths depending what you want to, to see. So, like before, you have your data input here. Uh, this one is about the um, sugar composition, Uniprot is in the back, and you get your sugar composition. From there, or you can check for uh, alignment and get 3D of the, um, of the glycoproteins, or you go to the recognition part, and these are well-known epitopes. So they are included here in those three structures. And from there, you can go to the network we built and go back to this host pathogen database. And to end to the, um, to the pathogen themselves. So that's the example we have. So to, to conclude, uh, I would say that our main target is to provide data, but to build tools and try to provide information to the user and finally connect the tools together. So we don't have standalone uh, software which need copy paste or useless uh, manipulation. And one main thing for glycobiology or glycoinformatics is to connect with non glyco work because, uh, like we saw previously, the glycan are related to protein but also to lipids, and that's in the plan. It's related with enzyme, it's related with a lot of things, and uh, to, 
to make it more, I mean, to, to, to apply those four or five points here, here, we are trying the most we can to apply the fair principle which were mentioned this morning. So, uh, just want to mention the people at SIV who are working with, with me. So the three, four first are in my group and we have collaboration with uh, children, of course, um, and other people from the Uniprot or or uh, other groups, Virazone. And we have a lot of external collaborators, uh, mainly because we are not biologists, so we need expertise for this. And all those people are participating in the development of our tools. We are, they, they are our main user for prototyping. So that's it. Yeah, that's it. So if you have any question, I think now we have time for questions.